simple. Good morning, guys. It's good to see everybody. So I'll probably ask a different question. They were saying who was here last night. Who wasn't here last night? That would be my better question to ask you. Okay. Good to see you. So who have I never met before? You've never heard my heart. You don't have a clue what I'm going to preach. <laughs> okay, good. No, that's a bunch of you. I want to bring you on page. Last night, I'm just going to nutshell. Oh, I'm good. Thank you, man. Thoughtful. Uh, I had living water. I'll never thirst again. <laughs> no, I'm just having fun. <laughs> Listen, last night we had a good time. I felt like we had a good time. We just shared the word. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 10 to not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And there's a reason. Please don't ever get trapped or caught up just thinking, you know, I'm a Christian. I got to be a part of a church. There's a reason we gather. We don't gather to qualify. We're already qualified. We don't gather to be accepted. We already are. You gather to stir yourselves up in love and good works so that your light continues to shine through your life, so that Christ keeps speaking through your life and marking hearts through your life. So the reason we gather is to stay focused so life doesn't sneak up on us and start speaking louder than truth. Yeah? All of a sudden, you're just doing as good as it's going. And all of a sudden, you get tricked into survival and trying to make it. And your story is everything that's happening to you instead of what he did for you and is doing through you. There's a big difference. A lot of Christians get reduced to trying to get by. And they use all their faith to get answered prayers to make their life go better instead of become more like him in their life. The whole goal of the cross is transformation and becoming more Christ-like. Christianity isn't church attendance, it's Christ-likeness. Yeah, just talking, I'm just, I'm not, it's not correction, that's encouragement. Some of you are looking at me way too serious, like, are you spanking us right now? Not at all, not even, that's not even in my heart. I'm not here to correct you, I'm here to tell you who you are and encourage you and cheer you on in truth, because truth makes you free. Feelings can lie to you if your feelings aren't redeemed through new life. What I mean by that is most your feelings, all your feelings until Jesus, and even after Jesus, if we don't have a revelation, almost all your feelings function through a self-conscious, self-centered motive. All your emotions flow through a wellspring of self-centeredness. That's nothing evil. It's just a perverted thing. You were created for God's image, and yet we're very self-conscious in our life. At a very young age, you needed honored, you needed appreciated, you needed encouraged, you needed stability, and a lot of us didn't have those things. So not having those things helped to form who we are. And it's all hinged on a lie. You'd be amazed. I'm going to. You'd be amazed. (laughs) Thank you, though, for the encouragement. You'd be amazed. The people we'd be if we just knew him from the beginning, from birth, if we just knew him in his ways. And we're nurtured by His love from the time you had conscious awareness. If His reality was our reality from that time on, you'd be amazed the people we'd be. We were trained by lies. The way that seemeth right to a man has been our tutor our whole life. I say it this way. We've been homeschooled in a wrong home. We've been taught by false things. You've been taught if somebody does you wrong, you have to react. You're either hurt, you're either broken, you're either forsaken, you're either discouraged, you're either angry. And none of those things produce life. None of those responses produce life. So they can't be the Lord. They can't be the truth. Like the way that seemeth right to a man, it always leads to destruction. The way that seemeth right. So that reactionary thing that you and I grew up with, it just came natural. It was all part of the fall of man. You were born into it. It's called Adam and you must be born again. Somehow we got the idea that born again is a prayer that takes me to heaven someday instead of heaven coming back into you and making you brand new. Jesus is new wine. God has poured out something new, new covenant through His Son. Blood, speaking better things. He's new. He's a new thing. Right? He's new wine. You don't pour new wine into an old wineskin. It doesn't hold it. The wineskin has to be made new you got to start thinking for the kingdom. Seek ye, not second, not second. Wow. Seek ye first 
The kingdom of God doesn't even say your well-being. Seek ye first your well-being. Seek ye first the protection of your family. Seek ye first. Don't say any of that. Seek ye first the kingdom. In fact, the Bible says unless you love less, unless you love less, and it rips off this most intimate list. See, most Christians, watch, Unless you love less your mother, your father, your spouse, your children, your houses, your land, and yes, your own life, unless you love less that list, you'll by no means be my disciple. It doesn't, he's not talking about going to heaven someday. He said, by no means will you ever be a disciplined learner, a wholehearted follower, and fulfill what you're here for. Unless you love less that list, most people get tricked into being Christians for the well-being of that list. And that list decides how they're doing. Are you with me? Come on, think with me. We have preached a very self-serving gospel, a very beneficial gospel. Instead of a lay down your life transforming gospel, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow King Jesus. So we let people decide how we're doing. The things that happen to us along the way. We remember our story like it was yesterday. Therefore, his story isn't changing our lives. Well, you don't know what happened to me. Well, you don't know what I've been through. What about what happened to him? What about what he's been through? When is there a transition where you lay down your life and he becomes your new life? At what point does it not even matter? What I've been through, when what he's been through is the deciding factor of truth in my life. wonder if I really do find myself through him, and I don't find myself through you. That's a good day for me. <laughs> because if I don't have that, then I'm only as strong as the weakness around me, and I'm only doing as good as you're doing me. That makes you Lord without me realizing it. All of a sudden, you're the one governing my life. And when you ask a person how they're doing, what's the normal answer? The two biggest challenges and keep me in prayer. It's a dead giveaway. How are you doing, man? Oh, man, it's been tough, but I'm hanging in there. Keep me in prayer. Which reveals that we're only as good as it's going. Instead of as good as he's in in me. And now I shine. So come hell or high water, I shine. Come justice or injustice, I'm a peacemaker. I show mercy. I walk in love. Why? I'm a Christian. So I'm not discouraged. I'm not frustrated. I'm not praying for a new job because I can't stand my boss. I'm weeping for my boss because if he knew who he was, he wouldn't be living the way he's living. And I should care about that not be mad at him. Wow, that's good preaching this morning. I'm glad you gave me that mic. I knew I had something good in me. Come on, think with me. But it's just natural. It's just natural. It's just the way that seemeth right to a man. If your boss is a jerk, I'd rather get a new job. Or why, God, do you let me put up with this? Why you even let him do this to me? If you love me, how come you let him treat me like this? (laughs) Their attitudes in Christians, I've seen them. I've been around a little now, 23 years. It's not forever, but it's long enough to learn some stuff. I've seen a lot of discouraged people that go to church. And it tells me that we don't understand the gospel. We're letting things matter more than what matters most. And we're Christians for our sake if we're not careful and not his great name. Don't let that happen to you. Please don't let that happen to you. You got this one life. It's one little life. It's one wisp of time. I'm 56 in December. I was 56. I'll be 57 this December. It is flying. I don't even know where 56. I can't even relate to 56. I don't even know what that means. It was a blur. Who's older than 56? Can you relate to the time? Or does it seem like yesterday? Was it a blur? Are you telling stories that were 40 years ago and then you laugh and go, oh my gosh, that was 40 years ago. (laughs) Who's doing that? Who's doing that that has whiter hair than me? <laughs> Who, who's getting close to 30 and you're like, I remember when I couldn't wait to be 21 and now I'm going, slow down! <laughs> Too fast! Isn't it amazing what we do? Can't wait till I'm 16. Can't wait till I'm 18. Can't wait till I'm 21. Ah! 25! Ah! 30! Ah! <laughs> it's just going, ain't it? 
wisp and a vapor. You got this one little life, this one little life. It's a one little window called time. Please don't miss why you're here. You're not here to survive. You're not just here to have fun. You're not just here to find the perfect spouse and have a nice little home and raise your three, four little kids and have a great IRA and be comfortable financially because of the blessing of the Lord. Be careful. Because you can have all those things and be angry. You can have all those things and be jealous and prideful. You can have all these things and be ticked off at your spouse and have animosity in your home and then you have nothing. You got one little window, one little shot. You guys are young, man. One shot called life. And this is your time. It's your day. You're here. Time to be born. Bing, here you are. Yay. So you're not just here because a man went into a woman. You're here because the Bible says there's a time to be born. And you were predestined before time to be adopted in as sons and daughters. So if you're here, God saw your day before anybody saw your day. If you're here, it's not by happenstance. You're here because the author and giver of life gave you life. And 500 million sperm cells raced to mama's egg and it was you. That is not happenstance. You aren't one of millions, you're one in millions. Millions of sperm cells racing for one egg and it was you from the beginning. Bam. <laughs> Sounds pretty personal and exciting to me. I don't think that's insignificant, and I don't matter, and my life is an accident. It's wrong. That's deception. It's lies from hell to get you to subvert your calling, your destiny, your purpose. See, light exposes darkness, and we're called to let our light so shine. The enemy's whole plan is to keep you self-conscious, self-focused, to hinder the light. Oh, get you to go to church, serve in a ministry, pay your tithes faithfully, but don't shine. You can do all those things and it won't change the world, but when you shine, people see. Amen. When you shine, people see. When you shine, darkness is exposed. It's not about your circumstances going cookie cutter perfect. It's not about your ducks in a row. It's about do you shine when things are going wrong? Do you shine in trial? Do you shine in injustice? Are you a peacemaker? Because peacemakers are the sons of God. Not those who confess sonship, those who make peace. Don't you get trapped in a confession when Christianity is an expression. You know them by their fruit. Come on, it's just good, solid preaching on a Sunday morning. Yeah? Don't get tricked. Don't get lulled to sleep. Don't let religion deceive you. Don't let anything you do that's Christian take the place of knowing him and becoming like him. Don't even let your daily devotion sneak up on you without intimacy with the Lord. Oh, yeah, I read my Bible today. Oh, yeah, I prayed today. We might have just prayed our list. Our wants, our needs. Or have we communed with Him? Father, thank You for loving me. Thank You for another day. Thank You for the gift called life. Father, I thank You today that nobody owes me a thing. And I thank You, God, that You live in me because You want to. And today is another opportunity to shine without me pushing, without me shoving, without me trying to even be evangelistic. I believe the attitude you've worked in me and the life you've put in me is going to touch somebody without me even trying. Thank you for a healthy attitude. Thank you for life on the inside. Thank you. There's a river flowing out of my belly. That's probably prayer. <laughs> rather than, oh no, six o'clock, I didn't sleep really good. God, how am I going to make the day? Please, I hope the boss isn't a knucklehead today. God, if you get me another job, I will be happy. <laughs> That's probably not prayer. <laughs> it's probably a self-centered, self-focused delusion session. <laughs> that you think is spiritual because you named the Lord in the sentence. <laughs> Oops. Are you guys okay? Because I'm having a lot of fun right now. Are you sure you're okay? Good. The faces are better now. When I first started, there was some... I didn't know what was going on. I thought it was deliverance in your church. I was going to say, man, open the door. Just go. Come on, a little, just a bad attitude. Just a wrong attitude. Just a little wrong thinking. Just a little wrong thinking. Just a little leaven. Just a little leaven. Just a little thinking for yourself. Just a little thinking for yourself. 
isn't cool when you're called to deny yourself. It's always fascinated me how people have so many rights within the house of God. So many rights. So many lines that can be crossed. So many chips that can be knocked off their shoulders when we've denied ourselves. How can you have so many rights when you denied yourself? When you died so you can live? Maybe we're still thinking like we were trained. Maybe we're still in Adam, even though we're in him. That gets weird. Maybe we're destroyed for the lack of knowledge, so in all you're getting, get understanding. Maybe we're not destroyed because we're hypocrites. Maybe we're not evil. Maybe God has touched our heart in a level where we really care and we want to know him the best we can. I think that's who I'm talking to almost all the time. But it's those little foxes that steal the precious fruit that's on the vine. And you're sitting there and you think you're growing, but there's no fruit. And, and after a while you say, man, how far have I come? Man, I've been in this thing 30 years. Has it even made a difference? And I'm not saying condemnation. I'm saying that's the thing you start thinking. And then guess where that takes you? Yeah. Condemnation. And now you're right in a snare. And the devil tries to say, you lived this thing for 30 years. What fruit did you produce? You've complained. You've bickered. Oh, yeah, you've been faithful in your ministry. But you've been mad at sister so-and-so. And blah, 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 blah. No, you got to say, wait, I'm done with that. I'm not on the earth for things to go well for me. I'm on the earth to shine, period. And I ain't letting nothing, no one, or no thing take the shine out of me when he's the one that put it in me. So let your light so shine before men so they see your life and go, wow, there is a God. And he is father. That's Christianity, guys, in a nutshell. <laughs> so go home, be blessed, have a great day. No. <laughs> it's Christianity. That's why we're Christians. It's why we gather, to stay focused and stirred. Yeah? So we don't let life sneak up on us. So we don't let religion law us to sleep. So we don't come here and sing, holy is the lamb, and sincerely fight over where we're going to eat in an hour. And have conversations like, you make me so mad. Boy, if that was God's conversation, he'd probably have never said in his son, he'd probably be waiting for you to grow up and get better. Boy, if God thought like we thought growing up, if God had the mindsets that we've settled into, we're probably in trouble. Somebody makes a mistake and it's all we remember. Four years go by, and when we hear their name, we still think about what they did wrong four years ago. We have no idea where their repentance level is, how they've grown, their time spent with Jesus. And next thing you know, we stereotype and we read books by the cover so we never see the inner chapters that are probably pretty awesome. So you put down the book because you think you know it by the cover. And the Bible says, don't you ever live that way. Don't you ever judge without word appearance. You judge with righteous judgment. Don't you ever see a man according to the flesh. Why? You see every man for what he's created to be and called to be and paid for to be. That's called love that never fails. It's called selfless. Without selflessness, you won't see that way. You'll see what you want to see. You'll see what you think you see. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Follow me. It's Christian. Why do you deny yourself? Because you were never made for you. You were made for his image. Isn't it amazing how we get tricked into being Christians for us? Some of us get tricked into being mad at God because things ain't going right. Why did you let? And where were you? And why didn't you answer prayer? And I got an issue with God. Well, we aren't talking right now. We're working through something. <laughs> That's delusion. You're way deceived. He's God and creator. And when the clay has an issue with the potter and actually thinks they're right, that's a sure sign of the fall of man and the pride of life. Yeah, it's time to go oops and backtrack in humility and say, God, you have to be good. Even if I don't understand this dilemma, even if I don't know why this happened, even if I don't know why this prayer didn't get answered, you have to be good or you'd never sent your son while I was yet a sinner. So I'm going back to the raw truth where truth was established and proven and I'm going to get rooted and grounded in love and never question the things that are settled. And then I'm going to live from that place. And my life's going to make a difference. Amen. Yeah, without me trying hard. That's right. Just because you've changed my attitude and you've put something new in me. Right. 
And all of a sudden, I don't even know how to fight with my spouse. All of a sudden, I don't even know how to fight with people. All of a sudden, I don't even now be hurt and offended and angry and discouraged. Why? Because it never is about me. It's about the one that lives inside of me, and he's amazing. And I'm not going to stuff him with personal feelings. I'm not going to stuff him with rightness and wrongness and he said, she said, and tit for tat. Well, I wouldn't feel this way if they didn't. Well, they started it. Well, I hope you talk to them. Well, <laughs> Did you ever see Jesus act that way, talk that way? Then where did we learn it? Did you ever get any of that from him? <laughs> then where did we get it? So if you can't find it in his life, probably ought to make sure it's not in yours. <laughs> and if you can't take the language you're speaking or the things you're thinking and put it in God and make it work, then he didn't teach you that. So if it sounds foolish in his mouth, make sure it sounds foolish in yours. So get it out. It's how we grow. It's called repentance. It's go, oops. Boy, that's not producing anything good. I know before I had a right to feel that way towards my spouse because they this, this, and this, but I realized, man, I shouldn't be waking up to need them. I should be waking up to love them. I should be waking up to be more like Jesus, not to have them do me right. See, if you wake up for people to do you right, you're only as good as they're doing you, and you're always under the control of men. And you'll always have a reason for not being like him, and the reason will be a person, not a reality. Could you picture Jesus sitting on a rock, all alone, crying? I don't think anybody appreciates me, Lord. I do good things, and they, they bicker, they backbite. You let me hear their thoughts. I wish you didn't let me hear their thoughts. Like, their thoughts are not encouraging. They think I'm a demon-possessed Samaritan. I don't even know if I want to get up in the morning. I'm not healing anybody. They don't appreciate me. Could you imagine Jesus having a little fit like that? A little self-centered relapse thing, a little moment? It was so hard passing the bread and cup tonight. I took everything in me. <laughs> They're sitting there, I'll die for you, I'll die for you. Ain't one of them going to die for me. They're all going to run. I'm going to be struck. They're going to scatter. I already know the scripture. <laughs> Has anybody seen Jesus having a hard time with people? Or do you just see him laying down his life and loving? You say, well, he couldn't do anything else because he's Jesus. He couldn't do anything else because he's love. Right. Yeah. He told us to love. And he didn't just preach it to us. He showed us what it looks like. He's the living epistle of love. I love him. I honor him so much. He's so much more than my Savior. He's so much more than my sin sacrifice. He's my model for life. He puts the why behind my life. And he shows me what life can look like when I believe. Yeah. The just shall live by. Not the perverted feelings we grew up with, people. You live by faith. You find truth. You stick to it until your feelings agree with it. Yeah. But you don't change truth. Yeah, but I feel. But what do you really believe? You got to go back to what you believe because the just Live by faith. You're so vulnerable when you live by feeling. Satan loves it. It's field day for him. Little poke, little prod, little wah! Little discouragement, little phone call with a friend. I just don't know what I'm going to do. If one more thing happens, I'm just going to give up. Oh, that's a good way to get one more thing to happen. <laughs> well, I'm just going to quit. Okay. You see how that's all about you? I wonder if Jesus said, I'm just going to quit. I wonder if he's halfway to Golgotha getting the whipping of a lifetime. And he finally just says, enough, I ain't taking no more. We said, well, he couldn't because he's Jesus. He couldn't because he's love. And the goal of our instruction and the purpose of our commandment, 1 Timothy 1.5, is love. It's love. The goal of our instruction the outcome and purpose of everything we're pursuing is to become love. Not to be loved, to become love. 
We're so big with God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. The whole goal of God loving you is so you're so touched by his love that you become the very thing that rescued you. So you become the expression of him, the body of Christ. So actually to be offended, to be complaining, and to be discouraged is totally unscriptural for a Christian, but we're not preaching that because we think it's normal and cut me a break, you're out of balance, brother. Everybody's going to have their moments. No, 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 that's why you have yours, your position for it. You believe it. <laughs> so wrong believing allows the plane to land all the time. You take away the runway and the plane can't come in. What if you wake up every day and let the gospel teach you this and say, nobody owes me a thing. I'm on the earth for one reason, to shine. Today isn't a day of offense. Today is a day of spirit-led living. My life's going to make a difference, and I don't even have to try hard because my attitude is clean in you. God, nobody owes me a thing. Boy, that would settle some things in your home. Why? Because it takes two to tango. It takes one to pursue peace. Blessed are the... Not blessed are the tango if that's a word and I'm not talking about the dance because many of us couldn't do the tango dance but we can tango oh. takes two to tango takes one to pursue peace blessed are the peacemakers well I just want to be used by God pursue love and desire to be used by God 1 Corinthians 14, pursue love. It's the excellent way. And in pursuing love, you'll be used by God. If you're not pursuing, you'll let being used by God take the place of love, and you'll let the way he uses you identify you, and you'll find your spirituality through being used by God instead of being more like him. That could give you pride, and that could be riding a wave that's about to end. So all of a sudden, you're only as good as he's using you. Instead of as good as he is in you and how much he loves you and how much you become loved. You just think about this. If God would ever make you free from yourself and you would understand the whole reason you're on the earth and the whole reason he's in you, then he would make you free from everyone else. And all of a sudden, no one else would decide how you're doing because he's already settled it. Yay. So every day is a gift and a blessing and we're never trying to survive. How do you think men like Paul went through what they went through? Perils, 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 injustice, wrongdoing, backslidden Christians, betrayal, all the stuff he writes about. And he's so in love with Jesus and he's so in love with people. You think he'd be hurt and hard and angry and frustrated and pastoring be great if it wasn't for the people. No, he understands it's all about the people. As he heard the words of the master, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they do. And if they really saw clear, they'd live different. So if I'm a light, I ought to shine, not get hurt. Wow, that's good preaching right there. Y'all getting that? Amen. Come on, it's what every face I'm looking at is called to. It's what every person on the planet is here for. The whole purpose of the cross is to restore you back to his image. So he became like us to pay the price for us to become like him, the body of Christ. And Christ in you is the hope of glory. So we're not Christians for ourselves, our own well-being or our gain. We're Christians for his great name because we've denied ourselves. We've picked up our cross and we're following him and he's amazing. Ain't that something? Come on, that's a simple... Awesome Sunday morning, rah, rah, stir up and love and good works message. In hopes that we come here and corporately love him, corporately worship him, recognize we're a part of something viable in the community where we're being sharpened and edified and focused so that when we leave, we're empowered to maybe look a little more like him than when we came. And if we keep coming back and doing that, we're going to stay on point. Amen. And we're going to run a race worthy of a prize. And time's not going to slip by. And life's not going to sneak up on us. Because the giver of life is in us. And he's why we live. Yes. And then we're never just singing a song. We've become something. And you know what's the benefit of that? When you look in the mirror and you know your life in him. It's not vanity. It's not a false pride. It's 
You start liking what you're becoming. You start looking at the mirror at your own face and you like what you see. For some people, that would be a first. Whew. You look in the mirror and you behold the glory of the Lord. And you realize you're being transformed into that same image. Why? Because your heart's sincere. You're repentant. You're before Him. You have communion with Him. When I first got saved, Holy Spirit would teach me to look in the mirror and talk to my own eyeballs. You know God thinks you're awesome. You know God thinks you're awesome. In fact, He gave His Son to shed His blood for you, sir. And I can see that He has made you righteous in His sight. And you actually believe it, don't you? <laughs> you fist bump the mirror. I've talked to myself countless times in the mirror. I've learned that people can't look in their eyes and talk like that because they're believing what happened when they were five, what they did when they were 21, who did what, and their spouse. I hope you look in the mirror and you see him. I remember the first day I did it, I walked by a full-length mirror. I was heading out, and I looked. You know how you just check yourself? I looked in the mirror, and I went, whoa, are you kidding me, dude? I walked right to the mirror. I said, you are so filled with Jesus, friend. I can tell you believe his love and you receive his love. Oh, my goodness, you are so not ashamed of this gospel. I see his light and his glory in your countenance. Man, I don't even know why you're standing here. The world needs what I see in you. You're going to have an amazing day, dude. <laughs> Do you think? Because actually, when I'm doing that, I'm either out of my mind and wasting my time and I ought to get a hobby. Or I might be out of your mind and I might be on to something. Because do you think I'm going to believe that way and walk out of the house and soon be offended? Do you think I'm going to walk out of the house and soon be caught up in sin in the flesh? Or do you think I'm living by the Spirit, which isn't spooky? It's just living by the truth. The Word is Spirit and life. He's the Spirit of truth. You've got to live by the truth. The truth makes you free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Why? Because the lights come on and you see what you never saw before and you have a duh moment in the Lord. Duh! Yeah. And you get it. Right. And you'll never be sold short again. You'll never be robbed again, lied again, cheated again through lack of understanding or deception. The truth comes. You continue in His Word, not your feelings, not your hang-ups. You continue in His Word, and you'll know, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And He who the Son makes free is free indeed. You see what's wrong with me? 23 years ago, I had a dumb moment. The lights came on. And the only thing I could ever do about that in a wrong way is get my eyes off the light. Get deceived. Get caught up in me. Backpedal into something that's old instead of stay with what's new. Because I found that every day His love is amazing and new and fresh. And the reality of His love is overwhelming. And the call and the purpose in life is the same. So I'm not growing familiar and I'm not growing old. Yay. Yeah? I'm not going to pick up things I put down. Yes. That's right. He's given me a lot of new things, new heart, new way of thinking, new attitude, new opinion. And it all brings life. I'm staying here. Because yeah. one day I'm going to stand before him. Amen. All the days coming. I'm not using that as a ploy, a scare tactic. It's just real. The day's coming when we all will stand before him. Yes. And are you releasing faith? Are you getting your feelings hurt? Are you living by faith? Are you tricked in self-consciousness? Are you going to be excited to stand before Him and know that you lived every day sincere, the best you understood for His great name? Didn't take account of suffering wrongs. Didn't think evil. And didn't think for yourself. That's called love. Amen? Come on, I'm calling you to this this morning. There's nothing I'm preaching you can't live if you wrap faith around it. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter who's doing what and who's treating you like what and who's not acting like what, 
This isn't about one individual unless his name is Jesus. And he should be making the difference. You can't say, well, I would be doing better if it wasn't for... Because if it wasn't for, isn't truth. It's a deception. One of the most dangerous counselings we do is we think it's compassion, but it's human empathy, and we know we'd be hurt. And see, if you're hurting, you can't help people that are hurting. There's no way. So they tell you what somebody did to them, and you go, oh, my goodness, I can't believe they did that. You must be so hurt. Let's pray. It's all delusion. Holy Spirit's not there. You think that's compassion? You're, you're empowering them to be hurt. You're telling them they're breakable and touchable every moment. So they're only as good as people are going to treat them, and we're praying for better circumstances? Come on, we're deceived. We've got to teach people why they don't have to be broken and why they don't have to be hurt. Listen, I understand what she said to you. I understand what she did to you. I understand what he said, what he did. It doesn't matter if it's male or female. It's the same truth. And you wrap your own around and say, listen, I'm more concerned about right now how you're responding and why you're letting that affect you so much. No, I realize that's your spouse. But what I see is you're drawing your identity from your spouse and you're only as good as they're doing you. That's deception, friend. Why are you a product of their dysfunction? And why are you letting what they don't see decide what you see? Why are you letting where they're not decide where you are? That's how I pastor. That's how I'm a friend. If you were my friend and I saw you in everyday life and I saw you slipping into that, I'd wrap my arm around you and have that talk with you for sure. And I'm just concerned why you're so offended. Well, you can't tell me day in and day out that that's not going to get on your nerves after a while. No, friend, you need to get new nerves. Because if your life is conditional on the strength of another, you're only as strong as their weakness. And then you're going to sing that Christ is your strength? I don't think you're looking to him. I think you're looking to them to treat you better, and you're finding your identity through that person. I said it last night, and I'm going to say it again because it's in my heart. We actually believe in the church that the people closest to us can hurt us the most. We believe that. We believe the people closest to us can hurt us the most, but they're the ones we say we love. And love doesn't seek its own. It takes no account of the wrong done to it. So why are we so busted up by people? The closer they are, why do they hurt us the most? Because we've learned to need them rather than love them. And we have expectations wrapped around the relationship and they're set up to fail us and we're set up to be deceived. If God lived that way, he's hurt every time you fail. If God lives that way, and you say, yeah, but that's God. We're just people. We're imperfect people. Stop selling cheap when you're not for sale. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As he is, so are we in this world. As the Father sent me, so I send you. The things I do, you'll do if you believe. Got enough scripture? He made us one. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go, therefore, in my name. He said he's given him the name above every name, every knee and every tongue. Bow and kneel, confess he's the Lord. You, therefore, work out your own salvation if you're He makes us one constantly through Scripture. He says, I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. He is not ashamed to call us brethren. You're predestined to be conformed, Romans 8, to the image of his Son. Who he predestined, he justified. Called. Who he called, he justified. Who he justified, he glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? For God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, that we would receive all things through his son. All things what? Necessary to become like him. So you put off the old, and you put on the new. You put off the old man and his deeds. And you put on the new man. How do you do that? In prayer. Father, I thank you. You never made me for me. You might even say this. For 12 years, I've been living for myself in you. Trying to get you to bless me and meet my need. Don't realize how self-conscious I've been. How circumstantially driven I've been. I've prayed to you countless times, but it was usually because I was afraid or running and desperate or in need. Or God, so many times I've questioned you. I'm done with all that. That is a lie. 
I'm not here for better circumstances. I'm here to look more like you. So, Father, I yield myself to you and I give myself to you the best I'm understanding this Holy Spirit. Have your way in me. But I put off self-centered things. And if in any way I get tricked in that lie, Holy Spirit, you come to my rescue and you bring these things to my remembrance. That'd be powerful right there. You start praying like that. You wake up every day. You're walking. Instead of going to the mirror and going, ugh, this is going to take a while. (laughs) You look in the mirror and say, Father, I thank you for another day. What a gift. The only reason life is a grind is because men are living it outside of why they're here. You go back and ask Jesus if life in the flesh was a grind for him. And he was the only man that was perfect and good. And he got the biggest injustice treatment ever in the history of time. And you tell me if life was a grind to him. No way. Because love, nobody owes you a thing. So men are never indebted to him. And he owes no man anything but to love. So every time he's loving, he's paid in full. And he's fulfilled in the Father. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, is to be filled with the fullness of God. That doesn't sound like deficit or lack. That's why we're on the planet. I'm done early. I so I was told 12 because I asked. But I'm done early. I feel like I'm done. I said enough. We're not here to stay all morning. We're here to stay focused on why we're here. We're here to stay focused on why we wake up in the morning. If mercy wakes us up, man, then let's live that day for why we're here. Please guard your heart, because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Don't get hurt. Don't get offended. Don't get betrayed. Don't even believe it's possible to be betrayed. Your war is not flesh and blood. And your fight is not people or the devil. Your fight is the fight of faith. It's to continue believing through a perspective that keeps life flowing in the face of it all. Your biggest fight is staying in faith in the midst of life. Your fight is not people, and your fight is not the devil. Your fight is faith, and the just shall live by it. You get it? Now, that's about as solid as I know to give it. You gave me a mic, so I preached good in your house. That's solid. You got enough this morning to be convicted by and just take off and to start talking to the Lord about. Wow, my life matters that much to you that you'd pay the blood of your son to put your spirit in me so I could shine. Wow, one son for a reproduction of sons. Wow, one seed for much fruit. Wow. You get it? That sure beats praying a prayer to go to heaven someday. What a bummer. That's a bummer. And then the whole time till that day, it's all about you and life has its ups and downs and we're holding on trying to make it, brother. That. <laughs> Not cool. I'm going to pray over you guys and I'm going to be done. This is going to be a set of record, Sunday morning record. This is the first time I ever felt done. I feel done. I've never felt done well, maybe we got it. in 23 years. <laughs> never. I've never heard the control tower say, bring it in, Dan. <laughs> Ever. I just stop. I usually stop in mid-flight. I just stop because of time. This morning, I feel totally done. This is amazing. <sighs> maybe you're just excellent hearers. Maybe point taken. Maybe there's enough conviction in the room for you to run well. Maybe there was enough planted on top of what's already been sown. Maybe out of the mouths of two or more. Bam. We just had a good complete morning. Yeah? So maybe everybody has enough to run well by. Yeah? So Father, I thank you for this house. I thank you for the honor of meeting Pastor Andy and his congregation. I thank you for the privilege of last night and this morning. Father, I believe there is good ground here. I believe you have found hearers of the word. And I thank you if they're hearers 
they're going to be doers also. I thank you not one of these people are going to look in a mirror and soon forget who they've become. I thank you they're going to hear and become and walk this thing out. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to personally be the conviction in every man and woman's heart and I ask that these truths would stay before us and produce what you pay for. And I thank you that you vanquish and eliminate discouragement, frustration, hopelessness, despair. Teach us the life you paid for. And let it thrive and shine in every one of us and make a difference in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. I'm done.